Hello everyone, and welcome to a new visual novel let's play. Uh, unlike a lot of visual novel let's plays I'm doing the, for this channel, this one's actually gonna not be blind. See, I played this game, uh, if you haven't seen the title already, it's Katawa Shoujo. Um, I played it a lot when it first came out. In fact, I actually, here's a bit of a fun story, I sparked a, in my high school, a trend of people playing visual novels. That's right, I actually got a whole bunch of non-visual novel gamers to play this game and play the visual novel genre. Um, that was a very strange time. Uh, awesome, mind you, but very strange indeed. Um, so, uh, the reason I'm doing this game is because, one, it was on, it's on, like, my bucket list of games to let's play because it left a very profound, um, mark on me, you know, as a person, uh, growing up. And, uh, the fact that I'm actually doing a school project on visual novels right now, and I would actually like to, uh, well, simply replay this and learn, re like, relearn all the stuff that I loved about it, so... Without further ado, let's go to the options, because that's of course where you have to go. So you might see the top option, Disable Adult Content. This game does in fact have adult content. And uh, if you don't know, you know, anything about this game, you might... That might be the one thing you might know, is that you, you do have sex with the girls in it. I'm going to leave it off. And here's the reason why. It completely ruins the tone if you click that box. Not to spoil anything, but when your characters are having a loving, tender moment, you know, thematically, it's very nice. It's not like... I'm trying to find an eloquent way to put it, but uh, basically, if, if you play this for that, you're going to have a bad time. Um, no, because it's, it's more for the theme, less for the actual, you know, you're not going to play it to fap to, basically. You'll be too busy crying. If you disable adult content, uh, when you go to get to that scene, it'll be all lovey-dovey and stuff, then all of a sudden cut to a picture of a squirrel, and then cut to the after, and it's, honestly, it ruins the tone. So for now, I'm going to leave it off. Don't worry, we won't be getting that for a very long time, though. Without any further ado, uh, I keep saying that, let's get started. Other than the fact that, I guess I should say, there was a poll for the girl I'm going to go for, and I won't say much else. A light breeze causes the naked branches overhead to rattle, like little wooden wind chimes. This is a popular retreat for couples in the summer. The deciduous trees provide a beautiful green canopy, far out of the sight of teachers and fellow students. But now, in late winter... Feels like I'm standing under a pile of kindling. I breathe into my cupped hands and rub them together furiously to prevent them from numbing in this cold. Now some of you might not understand this if you live in, say, the southern United States. This is about the majority of the year for us in Canada. Although this doesn't take place in Canada, let me just say that. Uh, but our name is Hisao. Just how long am I expected to wait out here anyway? I'm sure the note said 4pm. Ah uh, yes, the note. Slip between the pages of my math book while I wasn't looking. As far as cliches go, I'm more a fan of the locker or letter in the locker, but at least this way shows a bit of initiative. As I ponder the meaning of the note, snowfall gradually thickens. The snowflakes silently fall from the white painted sky are the only sign of time passing in this stagnant world. Their slow descent upon the frozen forest makes it seem like time has slowed down to a crawl. The rustling of dry snow underfoot startles me, interrupting the quiet mood. Someone is approaching me from behind. H hisao You came? A hesitating, barely audible question. However, I recognize the owner of that dainty voice instantly. I feel my heart skip a beat. It's a voice I've listened to hundreds of times, but never as more than an eavesdropper to a conversation. I turn to face this voice, the voice of my dreams, and my heart begins to race. Iwanako? I got a note telling me to wait here. 
It was yours? Damn it. I spent all afternoon trying to come up with a good line and that was the result. Pathetic. Uh, yes. I asked a friend to give you that note. I'm so glad you got it. Shy, joyous smile that makes me so tense I couldn't move a single muscle even if I tried. My heart is pounding now, as if we were trying to burst out from my chest and claim this girl for itself. So, uh, here we are, out in the cold. Once again, the wind stirs up the branches. The, cac the cacophonous noise is music to my ears. Iwanako flinches ever so softly against the gust of wind. As it passes, she writes herself as if supported by some new confidence. Her eyes lock with mine, and she lazily twirls her long, dark hair around her finger. All the while, the anxious beating of my heart grows louder. My throat is tight. I doubt I could even force a word if I tried. You see... I wanted to know... if you'd go out with me. I stand there, motionless, save for my beating heart. I want to say something in reply, but my vocal cords feel like they've been stretched out beyond the breaking point. Kisau? I reach up to try to massage my throat, but this only sends spikes of p p spikes of blinding pain along my arms. Kisau? My whole body freezes save for my eyes, which shoot open in terror. Kisau! The beating in my chest suddenly stops and I go weak at the knees. The world around me, the canopy of bare branches, the dull winter sky, Iwanako running towards me, all these fade to black. The last thing I remember before sleeping away are the sounds of Iwanako screaming for help and the incessant clatter of the branches above. So, I guess I can talk about this during this amazingly animated cutscene. This is Katawa Shoujo. Um, where do I begin to start off? Um, well, it was inspired by a... You know, I, I'm sure all of you don't do this. I mean, I don't even. I'm just relaying the story. But you know at the end of Hentai Dojinshi's where there's like a random insert page, usually of extra art or ideas that the author has or like an author's message. Well, originally one of them put in a design for a school, uh, like like a, a, a sort of Dojin style school for girls with disabilities. That through 4chan led to this, a full-fledged game for free, mind you, this you can all download this for free, where you date disabled girls. This is Katawa Shoujo. It's been four months since my heart attack. In that whole time, I can probably count the times I've left this hospital room unsupervised on one hand. For months, full four months is a pretty long time when you're left alone with your thoughts, so I've had plenty of time to come to terms with my situation. Arrhythmia. A strange word. A foreign, alien one. One that you don't want to be in the same room with. A rare condition. It causes the heart to act erratically and occasionally beat way too fast. It can be fatal. Apparently, I've had it for a long time. They said it was a miracle that I was able to go on so long without anything happening. Is that really a miracle? I guess it was supposed to make me feel better, more appreciative of my life. It really didn't do anything to cheer me up. My parents, I think, were hit harder by the news than I was. They practically had two hemorrhages apiece. I had, ar I had, I had already had a full day by then to digest everything. To them, it was all fresh. They were even willing to sell our house in order to pay for a cure. Of course, there isn't a cure. Because of the late discovery of this... condition... 
I've had to stay at the hospital to recuperate from the treatments. When I was first admitted, it felt as if I was missed. For about a week, my room in the ward was full of flowers, balloons, and cards. But for the vis but, but the visitors soon dwindled, and all the get well gifts began trickling down to shortly nothing after. I realized that the only reason I gotten so many cards and flowers was because sending me their sympathy had been turned into a class project. Maybe some people were genuinely concerned, but I doubt it. Even in the beginning, I barely had visitors. By the end of the first month, only my parents came by on a regular basis. And Wanako was the last one to stop visiting. After six weeks, I never saw her again. We never had that much to talk about when she visited anyway. We didn't touch the subject that was between us on that snowy day ever again. The hospital? It's not really a place I'd like to live in. The doctors and nurses feel so impersonal and faceless. I guess it's because they're in a hurry, and they have a million other patients waiting for them, but it makes me feel uncomfortable. For the first month or so, I asked the head cardiologist every time I saw him for a rough estimate of when I'd be able to leave. He never answered anything in a straightforward way, but told me to wait and see if the treatment and surgeries worked. So I idly observed the scar that those surgeries had left on my chest slowly change its appearance over time, thinking of it as some kind of omen. I still ask the head cardiologist about leaving, but my expectations are low enough now that I'm not disappointed anymore when I don't get a reply. The way he shuffles around the answer shows there is at least some hope. At some point I stopped watching TV. I don't know why, I just did. Maybe it was the wrong kind of escapism for the situation. I started reading and said, there was a small library at the hospital, although it was more like a storeroom for books. I began working my way through it, one small stack at a time. After consuming them, I would go back for more. I found that I liked reading, and I think I might have even become a bit addicted. I started feeling naked without a book in my hands. But I loved the stories. That was what my life was like. The days became increasingly harder to distinguish from each other, differing only by the book I was reading and the weather outside. It felt like time blurred into some kind of gooey mass that I was trapped inside, instead of moving within. A week could go by without me really noticing. Sometimes I had paused in realization that I didn't know what day of the week it was. But other times, all the things that surrounded me would painfully crash into my consciousness through the barrier of nonch nonchalance I had set up for myself. The pages of my book would start to feel sharp and burning hot, and the heaviness in my chest would become so hard to bear that I'd have to put the book aside and just lay down for a while, looking at the ceiling as if I was going to cry. But that happened only rarely, and I couldn't even cry. Today, the doctor comes in and gives me a smile. He seems excited, but not very. It's like he is trying to make an effort to be happy on my behalf. My parents are here, and it's been a few days since I've last seen them. Both of them even sort of dressed up. Is this supposed to be some kind of special occasion? It's not a party. There is this ritual the head cardiologist has. He takes his time sorting his papers, then is setting them aside as if to make a point of the pointlessness of what he just did. Then he casually sits down on the edge of the bed next to mine. He looks, in, he looks me in the eyes for a moment. Hello, Hassel. How are you doing today? I don't answer him, but I smile a little back at him. I believe that you can go home. Your heart is stronger now, and with some precautions, you should be fine. We have your medication all sorted out. I'll give your father the prescription. The doctor hands a sheet of paper to my dad, whose expression turns wooden as he reads it quickly. So many. I take it from his hand and take a look at myself feeling numb. How am I supposed to react to this? The absurdly long list of medications staring back at me from the paper seems insurmountable. They all blend together in a sea of letters. This is insane. Side effects, adverse effects, contradictions, and dosages are listed line after line with cold precision. I try to read them, but it's futile. Can't understand any of it. Attempting to only makes me feel sicker. All this, for the rest of my life, every day? I'm afraid this is the best we can do at this point.
However, new medications are always being developed, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that list fade over the years. Years. What kind of confidence booster is that? I'd have felt better if he hadn't said anything at all. Also, I've spoken with your parents, and we believe it would be best if you don't return to your old school. What? Please calm down, or please calm down, Hisao. Listen to what the doctor has to say. Calm down? The way he says it tells me he knew full well that I wouldn't like it. Am I going to be homeschooled? Whatever my concern shows, it, it's ignored. We all understand that your education is paramount. However, I don't believe that it's wise for you to be without supervision. At least not until we're sure that your medication is suitable. So I've spoken to your parents about a transfer. It's a school called Yamaku Academy that specializes in dealing with disabled students. Disabled? What? Am I... It has a 24-hour nursing staff, and it's only a few minutes away from a highly regarded general hospital. The majority of students live on the campus. Think of it as a boarding school of sorts. It's designed to give students a degree of independence while keeping help nearby. Independence? It's a school for disabled kids. Don't try to disguise that fact. If it was really that free, there wouldn't be a 24-hour nursing staff. And you wouldn't make a hospital being nearby a selling point. Of course, that's only if you want to go. But your mother and I aren't really able to homeschool you. We went out there and had a look back and had a look a couple of weeks back. I think you'd like it. it. Looks like I really don't have a choice. Compared to other heart problems, people with your condition usually tend to live long lives. You'll need a job one day and this is a good opportunity to continue your education. This isn't an opportunity. Don't call it an opportunity. Don't call it a goddamn opportunity. Well, you should be excited at the chance to go back to school. I remember you wanted to return to school. And well, it's not the same one. A special school. That's... An insult? That is what I want to say. It's a step down. It's not what you think. All the students there are pretty active in their own sort of way. It's geared towards students that can get around and that can still get around and learn, but just need a little help in one way or another. Your father's right, and many of the graduates of the school have gone on to do amazing things. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. One of my colleagues in another hospital is a graduate. I don't care. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability? That's what a disability is. I really hate that something so important was decided for me, but what can I do about it? A normal life is now out of the question. It's funny, I always had thought my life was actually kind of boring, but now I miss it. I want to protest. I want to blame this lack of shock on regret or fatigue. I could easily yell out something now, something about how I can go back to school anyway. But no. I don't say anything. The fact is I know it's futile. I look around the room, feeling very tired of all this. Hospital, doctors, my condition, everything. I don't see anything that would make me feel any different. There really isn't a choice. I know this. But the thought of going to a disabled school? What are those even like? As much as I try to put a positive spin on this, it's very difficult. But let me try. A clean slate isn't a bad thing. That's all I can think of to get me through this. At least I can still have something. Even if it's a special school, it's something. It's a fresh start and my life isn't over. It would be a mistake to just resign myself to thinking that. At the very least, I'll try to see what my new life will look like. Act 1. Life Expectancy So, when this was first released as a demo, you actually only got Act 1, but it's actually a 4-act game. That's pretty cool. Um, I guess I'm just gonna say, before we end the first part, uh, I feel like that's a good, that's a good stopping point. Um, my, uh, one connection I have to this, I don't know if people really know this, I don't go around stating this fact, but I actually have a heart condition myself. And, uh, as a kid, I, uh, if I had to exercise, my skin would turn 
transparent. My veins, my blue and red veins were very visible, and my mom said I looked like I was made out of marble. Uh, yeah, I had a really bad heart condition. One of the flaps in my heart does not work. Um, it's healed over time, and now I'm good. But no, it's like, as a kid, I had a lot of issues with my heart. And it's like, I don't know. I know it's a little thing, and, you know, it's I didn't have arrhythmia. Uh, but that was one of the things that made me really connect with this game. It's like... You know, I thankfully didn't have to go in for surgery on it, but that was like, I felt a connection to Hisao right from the get-go. Something that, you know, I feel a lot of other people don't, don't get on their own. But with that said, guys, thank you all for watching part one. I hope you stay with me. I hope I didn't bore you. I know that's a bit of a long intro. Uh, it's a longer game, so I'll see you all next time on Katawa Shoujo. Ciao.